Is AI getting too woke? Using ones and zeros, Google turns perverts into heroes. Journalists, the Twitterati, and of course the right-wing media Ragescape all seem to think so. After revelations in recent weeks that images generated by Meta AI and Google's Gemini image generators seem to be, well, not very historically accurate. Can't distort history here, Laura. The fact is, George Washington was white. No doubt, I have to agree that this is weird. Very weird. Especially given that just a few years ago, the fear was that AI simply wasn't woke enough. That images tended to reinforce outdated stereotypes or at times even go outright fashy. Remember this? But is synthetic media really turning woke? In this video essay, I'll think about a few questions. What the hell is going on here? And is there a way in which these images are in fact kind of cool? And if so, why? And finally, does any of this really matter? So let's begin with, what is going on here? Why did this happen? Well, the answer is prompt transformation, which is just a fancy way of saying that inputs were added to the original prompt after it was submitted in order one would suppose to avoid that the AI delivers offensive or obviously biased outputs. I'll let a couple of libs over at the New York Times and Platformer explain it better for me. These programs really are biased. If you just if you don't do anything to them um, in terms of fine tuning the the base models, they will spit out stereotypes. Right, and this of course is an artifact of the training data, right? Because wh when you use a chatbot, you are sort of getting the median output of the entire internet. Right, and it also is true that in some cases these models are more stereotypical in the outputs they produce than the actual underlying data. So these models are biased. The problem that Google was trying to solve here is a real problem. Google in building Gemini had done something called prompt transformation. So this is basically some a feature of some of these newer image generating models in particular, which is that when you ask it for something, like you ask for an image of a polar bear riding a skateboard, instead of just passing that request to the image model um, and trying to get an answer back, what it will actually do is sort of covertly rewrite your prompt to make it more detailed. Uh, maybe it's, you know, uh, adding more words to specify that the polar bear on a skateboard should be, you know, uh, should be fuzzy and should, you know, take place against a, you know, a certain kind of backdrop or something, just get expanding what you wrote to make it more likely that you will get a good result. This kind of thing uh, does not have a, a, a sort of conspiratorial mission, but it does appear to be the case that Gemini was doing this kind of prompt transformation. So if you put in a prompt that says, you know, make me an image of the American founding fathers, what it would do is without notifying you, it would rewrite your prompt to include things like, please show a diverse range of uh, faces in this response. And it would pass that transformed prompt to the model, and that's what your result would reflect, not the thing that you had actually typed. The point, in other words, is to massage prompts by adding details, especially when already not very well defined, in an attempt to combat algorithmic biases. Although in this case, it looks like the prompt manipulation was implemented in a really, really, really lazy way. On the one hand, I agree with Sunar Pichai, CEO of Google, who admitted that this isn't really great work, guys. I would chalk it up to, well, lazy solutioneering. Reflecting more than anything else on the really half-assed, bumbling, and even insensitive ways in which big companies and corporate diversity consultants tend to deal with DEI more so than any kind of woke ideological conspiracy. This all could have been really easily avoided, for example, by just transparently telling users about the alterations which were being made to the prompts. Or even better, gently suggesting them to the users and letting them decide. I think what bothers people here is not that the AI generates weird stuff. AI has always generated weird stuff. But that users feel that this is not the prompt being manipulated, but they that are being manipulated. And it must be said in a really, 
really dumb, clumsy, obvious way. Moving on to my second question. But is there a way in which these images are in fact kind of cool? I would say, yeah, hell yeah. At least depending upon what you want to do with them. That said, I think there are things that Google could do with Gemini to make it less likely to produce this kind of result. Like what? The first is, I think that these models could ask follow-up questions. Mm. You know, if you ask for an image of the founding fathers, maybe you're trying to use it for a, you know, a book report for your history class, in which case you, you want it to actually represent the founding fathers as they were. Or um, maybe you're making a poster for Hamilton, in or which maybe, case you don't. <laughs> exactly. Or maybe you're, you're doing some kind of, you know, speculative historical fiction project or, or, or trying to sort of imagine uh, as part of an art project what a more diverse set of founding fathers would look like. I think users should be given both of those options. You know, you ask for an image of the founding fathers. Maybe it says, well, well what are you doing with this? What, why do you want this? If you're a student and you want a picture of, say, Thomas Jefferson for the cover of a book report, which you may or may not have used, wisely or otherwise, a chatbot to write, then, well, you want something historically accurate. But why do you need AI for that? We have plenty of actual images of Thomas Jefferson, which are in fact historical artifacts in their own right. But what if, for example, you're interested in engaging in a little bit, not of historical revisionism per se, but perhaps speculative daydreaming? What if we want to imagine a kind of science fiction scenario in which Thomas Jefferson had been black? Something we've already done, by the way, in other mediums to great critical acclaim and commercial success. I like to call this part of Gemini LLM Manuel Miranda. How might his life have been different? For example, would it have changed his relationship to Sally Hemings? How might the USA have been different? What could such a thought experiment reveal about, for example, the racial dynamics of US history, the economic incentives behind slavery, and how they interacted? Are these images perhaps helping to generate speculative alternative histories which we may productively juxtapose to the actual past? Which brings me to my last question. Why does any of this matter? AI is in one sense really oriented towards the past. The data sets used to train AI are inevitably collected from the stuff we've already as individuals and altogether generated. That stuff makes up what tech companies call big data. For simplicity's sake, we can focus on two main ways in which this data gets used. The first way is, well, intrinsically meant to manipulate users so as to influence their future choices and behaviors. Think recommendation engines, which seek to influence our purchases on Amazon or our next view on YouTube or Netflix. Or they use that data to synthesize and generate something relatively new in an existing medium, such as in text or digital reproductions of existing visual images. This means, of course, that whatever they produce often contains all of our biases. It also means that there is something kind of shady, one might even say colonizing, about the ways in which this data gets collected. Nobody really ever agreed to give this data up, at least not unless they've actually sat down and read all of these intentionally dense and incomprehensible terms and conditions. And they would have probably had to be a lawyer to understand any of it anyway. No, it was all just, well, taken. That said, there are some ways in which this data could be used to provide genuinely helpful services. Let's say, theoretically, by informing you that some purchases you make could be written off on your taxes and other ways in which they are put to invisible but ultimately manipulative ends. And why is this important? Because it highlights our agency and pressures put upon that agency in the present. And in an era in which tech companies make money by trying to control our behavior, that agency is really important. So where do we go from here? Well, from a product standpoint, I think it's pretty clear that we need to be able to give users the chance to decide on whether or not they want an output, which is a relatively accurate rendition of the past. But it's equally important to allow users the opportunity to have these more playful, weird outputs as well. It all depends on their use case as to whether this is a bug or a feature. 
Right now, one of the problems with the most popular generative AI applications out there, and this is true of a lot of hype technologies in general, see, for example, blockchain, is that they tend to be solutions in search of a problem. In other words, engineers aren't always starting from clear use cases to solve problems that people actually already have. They're just trying to think up cool new things they can do with cool new toys. That said, this could also be a boon. What kinds of really interesting uses might people just stumble upon or invent when they use an AI tool and get an output that they didn't expect? Isn't there something to be said for the value of serendipity? I mean, given that most of the data that these systems operate on is gathered from and thus biased towards the global north, it's kind of cool to see that, however accidentally, it can still produce stuff like a black pope. And indeed, there are in fact three black popes from Africa in history, all of which were declared saints. We're not exactly sure if they were black in the contemporary sense that we think of it today, but they definitely weren't pasty northern Europeans. Would you have known that at all if it wasn't for this? What I think that these images offer us, to throw a bit of academies around, is a queering of the past. By queering, I don't mean that they are making the past gay or something like that, although let's be honest, the past was in fact a lot more gay than certain straight reactionaries would like to admit. What I mean is that they bring to the fore our base assumptions, the things we just assume to be true because that's the way we've always thought they were, and we never stop to ask ourselves why. This allows us to reflect critically or creatively on them. In a sense, they denaturalize presumed categories and short-circuit simplistic totemic thinking about the past, making it seem less inevitable and more contingent, and in doing so, they may also perhaps disrupt the trajectories towards which our futures are heading. These incidents, embarrassing as they are for the mega corporations behind them who, let's be honest, really have the resources and skill to avoid PR disasters like this, guys, if you hadn't just been so damn lazy. Well, they nevertheless offer us, as creatives or scholars or just people who want to do a bit of daydreaming, a lot of possibility. Given the very real issues surrounding intellectual property rights, fair use, data consent, and potential disruptions in markets for creative labor, there are real reasons to worry about this technology. But we should be less anxious about whether or not this is woke. It's, it's just not, by the way. It's just not. It's, it's just not, by the way. It's clearly a computational hallucination. Hell, it's an image generator. It's 100% certified hallucination. Anyone who thinks this is going to somehow rewrite history or brainwash us is either a moron or thinks you're a moron or both. I have. You know, our children may not remember the present as we see it. Now, I did an AI search and I asked them to give me an image of TV host oh. Laura Ingram. Look what happened. Now, that doesn't, now, come on, that doesn't look like you. But she was a big deal. She was. In which case, you should probably just ignore them. We should stop freaking out about what is, after all, a relatively harmless set of bugs in a system which, in total, is already frightening enough on its own, and instead ask ourselves why this feels so strange, and how we might make those feelings of estrangement productive. We should ask ourselves, what kinds of better futures might these hallucinations about the past allow us to dream up? And how do we make them realities?